I know as a writer, I have greatly benefit from using this method to write better stories with more purpose and more fun. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Riley K. Jones. I'm a writer, teacher, and author tuber. And today we're going to get into the Save the Cat method of plotting. So Save the Cat uses beats in and, and gives you actually a beat sheet to follow. And it basically divides your story into three main acts. And within those acts, you have scenes. And then those scenes follow certain types of patterns and beats because all good story structure kind of similarly follows the same story structure. Think of some of your favorite movies, like maybe some of the Marvel franchise movies. If you break it down and boil each one down to its bare minimum, they're the same story. Different themes, different characters, different messages, but they all follow the same exact concepts and beats as your favorite book. So we're going to first talk about the first act and what should be included in the first act. The first act will include the opening image. So this is kind of like the before snapshot of your hero in the world. You're basically going to be setting the stage up for why is this story important and why is this character going to be going through this story. So you need to tell us what is kind of like the status quo of their world. Then about 15% of the way through your novel, you sh will, should have mentioned a theme that may be through the character's own eyes, another character saying it, and it'd be kind of like you're hinting at what the hero's arc would be, what is coming up for the hero or your main character of your story. The next beat is the setup. So this is going to be about, about five to ten, five to ten percent of your novel, and we're going to really look at the status quo of your character's life before the transformation that he he or she is going to go on. And also we're going to see the hero's reluctance to change and not wanting to learn that theme, but that person's going to have to learn the theme eventually. Then we're going to hit the catalyst. This is about 10% of the way into your novel. This is your inciting incident. So if you ever remember the, the your plot lines that you learned about maybe in grade school, middle school, or high school, where you have Freytag's Pyramid and you have your exposition, basically that's what we just talked about your exposition then we hit the inciting incident what has kicked us off into our rest of the story it's going to be that main source of conflict our character has to face it's going to catapult them into that new world that new way of thinking for the rest of the story then about 10 percent uh, to 20 percent of the way in is the debate if you're ever familiar with the hero's journey that it's kind of like the refusal of the call to go on to this new adventure to do this new thing they're going to debate whether or not they should be following this lead, following this adventure, going on that thing. Then we're into act two. Act two is basically then your rising action on your traditional plot point. Save the Cat calls this break into two and that's about at your 20% worth of your novel. This is when the character decides to go and face the thing that they don't want to face, go on that adventure, go on that journey, try something new, whatever the inciting incident is, they decide to pursue it. And then this will kind of go into like a world of the unknown type of thing where things are un unknown to the character, new to the character, they have to really struggle up that plot line point. They're struggling and trying to figure the world, figure out the adventure, the characters, out a lot of conflicts will happen here. However, before we get into the real part of the story, your B story should be introduced shortly after the break into two. That B plot story, C plot story, whatever, will then kind of intertwine and help strengthen your book. A lot of times this could be a romantic interest. If it is not a romance story, it could be a side type of quest or a side friendship type of thing. It could be a very a lot of varying different things. Maybe they're trying to mend their relationship with their mother. Maybe they are trying to 
find this other piece of item for their magic quest to help boost their power. Maybe they don't like a character or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of other things. It should be playing off the theme of your of your plot, but so but it doesn't have to be the main focus. That's why it's a B plot. So this B story will also introduce a whole nother set of characters that could be a love interest, a nemesis, a mentor, or a family member that helps them learn the theme. Next, we move into the fun and game section, and this is about 20% to 50% of your novel. This type of section is what you have hinted at in your back cover blurb. This is what is the fun and games. What makes your book exciting? the adventure that they go on. Enter the new world that the hero needs to experience. They, we can see them either loving it, hating it, neutral to it, struggling, not struggling, whatever the case may be. And then at 50%, we get to the midpoint or midpoint turn. This is when everything kind of gets flipped on its head. Normally there's a type of twist. Especially if you're writing a thriller, this could be a body being discovered or a second or third body being discovered or maybe the, the character that they're following all along is cannot be the murderer, things like that. This will have a type of false victory or it could be a false defeat, like this false defeat could be a new body being discovered in a thriller or it could be a false victory where you think you have captured the murderer but it's actually not the murder is actually not that person. So the, that's two examples of how the fun and games and the false victory and false defeat could appear. Something should happen here to really raise the stakes and push the character towards real change. The next part of act two is the bad guys close in. This is the point in the novel when we think like oh that guy was the murderer he's captured oh wait something else is happening, maybe someone else, another body gets discovered, etc. And we're like, oh, this is not sure we caught the wrong person. Things are going to get worse for your hero. But if you have a false defeat, things are going to get better for your hero. This also could be literally bad guys closing in and capturing the hero. Then we have all is lost. That's about at the 75% mark. And this is when your character feels at the lowest point. They think that, oh, I have completely failed as a person, a hero, a character, I have completely failed. And you're pushing your character to hit that rock bottom, which then leads into the dark night of the soul, which is 75 to 80% of your novel. This is a reaction beat. So we're reacting from the from the all is lost. And typically this person will be alone or feel alone in the world. The hero is way far off worse than he was, he or she was at the beginning of the novel. And really second guess, it's almost kind of like a second debate of like, why should I have done X, Y, and Z? It only has related to this failure. And then we have the break into three. So now we're moving into our act three. This is at 80% of your novel and this is kind of like the aha moment. It's when the final clue clicks into place. It's when things start adding up and it's when the hero or character realizes the flaw in themselves and they start to begin to learn the theme of your book. Then we move into the finale. This is 80 to 90% into your book. This is the climax of your novel in a sense. This is when the hero proves that they have truly learned the lesson that they were supposed to be learning. So this is when, you know, you defeat the bad guy. The lovers can be restored. They, they are back and reunited and the flaws of the character have been conquered. So not only is the hero's world saved in this moment, but it's actually a better place because they went through this journey and they've realized the sweetness of life. Then you have about the final image that is about 90 nine to a hundred percent of the novel. It should be pretty quick. Um, I know some people go on a little bit longer, but if you ever read the Lord of the Rings series or watched the movies, you really see that kind of happen in the last one where there's like 10 different endings. You don't want to have that. There's like so many beats where you're like, it could end here. It could end here. It could end here. And it doesn't. 
Tolkien is like the one person that can get away with that. <laughs> um, there's not many other people who can get away with that. Most people are like, okay, I want the book to end. All the exciting bits that change, that growth have happened. So it shouldn't be very long. It should be only 99 to 100% percentage mark of your book and this is the to mirroring the opening image sometimes it could be in the same exact place it could be the same exact feeling it could be it should kind of mirror the beginning and the end and this is the after snapshot of who the character was and how that person has changed because of the, the journey they went on so that is the basic gist of what the beats are for more information and more detail i do suggest you picking up a copy of save the cat writes a novel by jessica brody she does a really great job of explaining some and more details about different um events and even different scenarios for different writers and different genres so if you are interested in learning more i would highly recommend getting the book save the cat writes a novel by jessica brody and that is all for today's video i hope you really enjoyed my explanation of save the cat writes a novel beat sheet i know as a writer i have greatly benefit from using this method to write better stories with more purpose and more fun if you like this video please let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up and if you haven't already click subscribe for more videos on all things writing and reading i post new videos every thursday thanks so much for watching keep writing and stay creative